I want you to review uh, the idea of the domain. Questions, people? Domain and range. Eh, you, you will have all those notes, by the way. So the function is the machine. That's kind of the fun idea to explain. Here's the machine, like engineering machine. And it gets in an input. I'll be using this terminology a lot. Input and output. It swallows the input. That's called domain. It works on it. It does some stuff, some magic, or just y equals x squared, y equals square root of x, whatever it is. And it spits out the output. I'll be using that terminology too, called f of n. The output is range. That will be important for this class. We'll be doing it a lot, graphically and not graphically. So input or domain called argument, and then the output is range, f of x. And you know this stuff. Um, for example, the input is x equals 4. The function is y equals square root of x. The output is y equals square root of 4. Which is 2? Domain, range, input, output. That is one of the things to review. And let's quickly go through stuff just to have good notes. And I'll be referring to the lecture 0 after this. Uh, which are power rules. So how to work with exponents, powers. Oh, I did mention my announcements that I like to use colors. Do we have a colorblind person in this class? Uh, you don't have to reveal it to personal information. You need to tell me. Because then I will stop using colors you don't like. We had it uh, once in a while. I used to, I did not use red or green. Some students did not see anything in green. It's just interesting that some colorblind people don't see anything in red. It just disappears. So that's pretty cool. So I do not use any colors. Very flexible with that. Just let me know um, before it's too late. I mean, I always can stop doing it. A to the x times a to the y gives you a to what? X plus y. Thank you. Good job. A to the x over a to the y gives you a to the x minus y. Amazing. Let's review that. And the only way they actually multiply is when you have power to power to power to power. That will be ax times y. Or yx, doesn't matter. Sometimes people even reverse it as y to x. Doesn't matter because it's product. So this is to remember. Now, some classical cases. A, let me choose different color. A to the 0 is 1. And that's a 0. So it should not be 0. We will actually learn what 0 to the 0 is uh, later in calculus 2. 0 to anything is 0, but anything to 0 is 1. So that's, that's the con conflict, and we're going to learn it later. It's very interesting. a to the minus 1 is 1 over a. Again, a should not be 0, right? We know that. Let's not divide by 0. We will be dividing by 0 in this class a lot. That will be very impressive, too. Finally, have to rewrite 1 over 3a if 3a are in the denominator. 3a to the minus 1, one way to rewrite it, or 1 third a to the minus 1, right? So what just happened? Apparently, a fraction 1 third is also 3 to the minus 1. That's the classical rules. Review that. And now the complicated case. So we know the easy example of square root of a is a to the one half. We know that. But what if we have a to the three quarters? Then we know it's a power and a radical. Radical means a root. So I remember this way. Three was on the top, so it will go to the top. Four was at the bottom, so it will go to the root. That's kind of some visually. Many people are visual learners, so that's how visually I remembered. In general, the formula says A, M over N is. M was at the top, so it will be at the top. N is at the bottom, go to the root. And you can go here and there, both directions. One more thing to review is square root of A times B is square root of a times square root of b. Or both are one halves. a to the one half, b to the one half. Those are the notations and rules. 
the, one of the important thing is how about actually that's not supposed to let's do together a plus b square root of a plus square root of b yes that is, that is not true so i'll be making mistakes mostly on purpose or not for you to concentrate and catch it's fun it's fun to catch professor's mistake you can definitely tell me that it's wrong it's part of the class so it kind of makes it exciting you cannot do that that will be a common mistake just don't do that plus and minus there's nothing to simplify actually you can maybe write down a plus minus b to the one half but you cannot break it into pieces because it's not a product or quotient one more minus x squared is not minus x squared even though it sounds the same so i know that my american colleague he's, he does a pause minus x squared is not the same as minus x squared anyway because the left hand side has minus outside of the parentheses so you can simplify and write down minus x squared is not x squared that's why Formulas to know, formulas which we expect you to remember. So put it in the box with exclamation mark. X plus or minus Y to the square. That's called square of the sum or difference. You square the first term. Plus or minus double product. Plus square the second term. That will be important. Let's call it formula number one. So one in the circle, it's a notation. It means I'm naming it, formula number one. And the second formula we expect you to know is difference of squares, x squared minus y squared. Yeah, good job. And plus y, amazing. If you don't remember this, that is why this lecture is for. You have two days to look through this lecture and remember these things. The earlier you memorize it, the better. On the test, we assume you know it, so you kind of don't have a choice. <coughs> Again, let me put in different color. X plus minus Y squared is not X squared plus minus Y squared. You cannot break it to pieces if it's a not product or quote. So do not do that. Everything else, put it in the box. This is important. I always tell my lectures what is important. Now, your favorite quadratic formula. AX squared plus BX plus C equals to zero has roots. Usually two roots, sometimes no roots, sometimes one root, but that's actually two the same roots. X, I usually write down one comma two, and the different notations doesn't really matter. Do you know the song? International students, you might not know, but Americans have songs on everything. Uh, there's songs about quadratic formulas, some serious convergence, lots of stuff. They like that. Uh, alphabet, we don't have song for the alphabet in my culture. We just, we're hit by a stick and we remember it. So the quadratic formula is minus b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So you can sing it during the test just quiet. I'm fine with that. So remember that, review this, that two roots, uh, it's a parabola. And then when we set it equal to zero, we see where it intersects the x-axis. There was two places, one place or no places. That's the idea. Fractions and factoring. Uh, many people are struggling with fractions. So let me show you that, which is okay. Uh, again, don't be upset if this is hard, if this is old, it's been a while, summer or several years for you. Your job is not to get upset, but to catch up. So I will be always saying that. Being upset is not gonna help you, but catching up will. Fractions, for example, x plus y all over 15 how to rewrite it in, as a two fractions so perfect, y plus y over 15 thank you that's very good that's example number one but you do not rewrite them as 15 over oh uh, but one more example 15 over x plus y is not cannot be rewritten as anything actually 
Maybe you can put 15 in the front and write down 1 over. But it's not 15 over x plus 15 over y. Don't do that. That's a common mistake. Again, sums and differences are tricky. You don't break them into pieces. It has to be factored mm -hmm. out. Fraction on, to on top of the fraction. x over 3 over 27. You can use colors. So what I'm doing... Yeah, thank you. Uh, what I do is color coding, so I use uh, lots of colors in my notes, and then when I review them, I clearly see what is happening. So I like that. You can definitely write down as x times, and you flip the fraction. Officially, it's called multiply by reciprocal, which means you're multiplying by 27 over 3. I know I could simplify it, but I want to show that. That's my point. So there are several ways to writing it down. Check it out. You can also write down as x times 1 over 3 over 27, you could do that. You can also write down as x times, uh, you can also write down as 27x over 3, like so. So learn how to work with your fractions. How about this one, number 3? x plus y over x plus 7. You have this quite a lot already on Monday. Can I simplify? That'd be nice. You cannot. It's not y over 7. Just because something is repeated, you cannot necessarily cancel it out. You have to factor it first. Then it will work. That's smart, yes. You can multiply by the reciprocal. You can multiply by the conjugate. We will do that in the future. So we're going to do that later. But don't make the small mistake. Leave it as it is if I don't require to do anything else. So. Don't do this, but you can work with it if it's a product. x times y and x times 7. Then, yes, you can divide by x. They call it cancel it out. And it will be y over 7. And, of course, uh, you can only do it only if x is not 0. Because you cannot cancel out 0. Canceling means dividing by, so you cannot divide by 0. That is the idea. Finally, let's do this one, interesting one. Example number, so that was example number four. Example number five is minus fraction two minus x minus three, working with negative signs. Also, it's part of factoring. So the answer is, like you said, 2 over x plus 3. But it looks so fast. How did you do it? So let me show you steps. There are several ways of seeing it. You can write down minus 2 over minus x minus 3. So negative sign can jump into the numerator because it was in front of it. You can also write it down as minus 2 over factor out minus it will be x plus 3 and then exactly you can cancel out the negative sign so the answer will be 2 over x plus 3 so that's some things to figure out how to work with factoring products and quotients and one more thing with factoring questions about anything I don't ask questions right now because it's review so uh, but I will be asking for questions with a new material of course finally let's just do one example of factoring factoring 3x to the 5 plus 6x to the 7 minus 9x to the 11 equals when you factor out You'll search for the variable, in this case it's x, with the smallest exponent. So it's going to be x to the, okay, 5, 7, 11. 5 is the smallest, right? Yes, good job. And now I notice 3 also can be factored out. So let's factor out 3. 3x three to the 5. When you factor out, you divide by this term. So 3x to the 5 over 3x to the 5. You don't have to write this down. You can use a pencil just in your mind. That's 1. 6x to the 7 over 3x to the 5. 6 over 3 is 2. x to the 7 over x to the 5, we just reviewed that. 7 minus 2, x squared, exactly, minus 3x to the 5, 
three x to the six. If I set it equal to zero, do you remember what it means? If I set it equal to zero, it means three x to the five equals to zero and or one plus two x squared minus three x to the six equals to zero. And then you use quadratic formulas or any other way, sometimes technology to actually solve for solutions. Does that make sense? Questions about this? Good job, people. I see you on Monday. Exactly, it's 10, 10. Come here if you have more questions, concerns, email me. And have a good weekend.